So how many of you like Italian food? Only 10? Ah, 20, good. So uh, I like pasta pomodoro myself, spaghetti pomodoro if you like. But what you don't like will be spaghetti cold. And I'll talk to you about as to why and how we can avoid that. I'm Srinath Acharya, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Excel4. And we are leading providers of what we call SDV Connect solutions. And I'll talk about that in a brief detail as to how you can participate in the SDV ecosystem and really benefit yourself and your customers. Whether you are an EV manufacturer or a supplier to EVs, companies, uh, you will find that software-defined vehicles is really a very important point as a next stage of deployment. I will talk about what we mean by SDV. SDV is a very ill-defined term. A lot of companies will talk about SDV, but everybody has their own definition. So we try to be slightly comprehensive in what we talk about. And I'll go through this uh, uh, definition first and then talk about what is really powering SDVs and then, of course, talk about the applications and the uh, use cases to highlight that SDV is complex but doable. And we certainly can provide ways to do it effectively. So what do you mean by SDV? All the definition of the vehicle comes from software. So you don't have to have the basis of just the metal and hardware put in and stop. So you have to start with the metal and hardware, of course. But after that, the only thing that changes is software. So what it means is that you can have a high-end vehicle, a sports, a mid value segment with exactly the same investment. You don't have to keep reinvesting. And if you do it the right way, through standardization, you can truly benefit from whole aspects of the software-defined vehicle, which can be a game changer. I know people are akin or, uh, to investing, depending on the region of the world, and people are looking for ROIs, but this is the best ROI you can get in your deployment and your next generation thinking. So what are the technologies that empower the SDV? When we look at SDV, we look at seven aspects of what a SDV really means. CI, CD, that's something which you may be doing, continuous integration, continuous development. And why do you need that? To really shrink the time for development. You don't want to have silos. Development, throw it over. Testing, throw it over, get to the car. And if there's a problem, then you restart with this, oh, what can we do here? It's all a single cycle. Service-oriented architecture, where you can have container-based systems so that even embedded software is not tied directly to the hardware. Imagine the scale of that. Cloud, I'm sure you're working with companies like AWS in one format or the other. Or if not, you need to be working at some point soon enough. And either you have it in your roadmap or you're working with companies who are going to provide autonomous systems. Our focus remains on the connectivity portion. So, so the bottom half is what we do not do. The top half is something what we do. And I'll talk about that in a second as to why and how we do it. We have a lot of experience deploying globally. But the key thing here to notice is you're not connecting to the car but you're connecting to each device inside the car. And that's really the key difference in what we do. And if you cannot do that, you will not have a software-defined vehicle. So you have to really think beyond, oh, I have connectivity. Even for a simple two-wheeler, you can actually manage. I just give an example of a battery system. 
you can extend the range, manage the range. Because as many people have been talking here, uh, battery is a challenge. And battery degrades over time, but it's not the whole battery. It's each cell degrading at a different level. So how do you get the information about each cell so that you can appropriately manage? And you can truly extend the life of the batteries and make it very effective. So first you start with the in-vehicle. And it has to be data-centric, IP-connected vehicle. You have to have that as a key requirement when you are designing, even for a simple one, even two-wheeler. Think of it that way. Now, in, your, in some cases, you may say, well, it's just a drone. It's noisy, but it's there. So the point is, in that case, perhaps you may not need it. But if you think even for that, because as you have a portfolio of drones, for instance, go from a tiny one to a big one, you may need more connectivity. And you may have more uh, aspects of it uh, effectively managed. But again here, a lot of things coming together. And uh, you don't need to know everything, but you need to be aware that you have to have hypervisors, containers, uh, other data management solutions that you can effectively deploy. And it's all being done through standardization. You do not have to depend on one vendor or do not have to depend on yourself. Because if you do that, then you'll be killing some of the time to market advantages and the cost advantages which can benefit from standards. In my previous company, uh, we were doing networked multimedia. And it was a huge challenge. And as we started uh, growing, and then we sold our company to Harman, what we realized was that the standardization is very critical. Because while we are providing our systems to Harman, we're also providing to their competitor, Siemens. And the question was, uh, why would competitors accept it? And they will sometimes say, wow, you are, you are providing to competitors. The question was, do you want a lower cost, lower time to market, or you want exclusivity? And the answer every time is clear. Lower cost and lower time to market, shorter time to market. So, so I think standardization is the key. It's very important that we are able to do it effectively. When you come to the cloud side, you have to connect. You don't have a choice. If you just stick here, it's a problem. And once you get to the cloud, you have all the various applications available. There was a mention in the first speech from Mohammed that key site, or OTA. But that's just the start. OTA is a great framework. You're talking about features on demand, fleet management, telematics, and so on. And all of them are coming together. And again, if you depend on yourself or on uh, one vendor, you've got a challenge. Because either innovation will stop, stall, cost will go up, or you'll be slow to the market. And your focus has to be laser on what you deliver and where your differentiation is, not on the plumbing. And uh, again, we do that through a standardization of the e-sync alliance. So, the question is, why standardize at all? I, yeah, I know, I know standardization is, is great news and so on. But why? What is the value to me, you may ask, right? And the answer is, computer complexity of architecture is happening. I mean, the bigger the car, if you have a luxury car, it's more complex, typically. If you have a two-wheeler, less complex. But think of your roadmap. Complexity will be there as you develop. You want to add more features. Everybody wants to deliver the products yesterday. Nobody wants to be saying, oh, I'll wait for three years. Nobody has time. The world passes by. And once you are done with that, if you are able to compress the time, you compress the cost. I think it's a very simple relationship that you have to manage. And we talked about software updates. That's the only way to deliver newer and newer features. You cannot stop with one feature, for instance. And very importantly, interoperability. Because if you don't have that, you will be spending time, so much time in integration, that'll kill you. So you have to really go ahead and make sure you're delivering as much of the standardization as possible. And the benefits of standardization is one thing is compliance. And we're not just talking about compliance to a particular standard. But you may have heard of things like WP29, and all of you have global ambitions, presumably. 
So you deliver here, but you look at uh, Europe, you look at WP29, go to Japan is different. Maybe a flavor of that, but not the same. You have to be able to comply to that. And standardization bodies can really help in making sure that these are available. And once you have a standard, you can work with multiple providers. You can be providing your own stuff. EV companies can be providing and sourcing from multiple. And even if you don't have access to markets, being part of a standardization group, you can have get access to more markets. And I'll talk about that in a second. You can lower your total cost of ownership as a OEM, or you can lower your cost of development for an OEM by being part of such organizations because things are standardized. You're not giving proprietary solutions. This market is new. That's why the concept of standardization has not really uh, seeped in. But it's very important that we keep that in mind. And you don't have to worry about every detail in the market because you will always be exposed to various concepts from other partners who are already investing. The, the alliance itself may be investing in figuring it out. And most importantly, future-proofing yourself and your customers, which gives you the distinct advantage or being very focused in what you deliver, being the best in class, but at the same time going to the next level and delivering a full solution. So this is a standardization. We have, we have one of the co-founders of this standard. Uh, it's a fast-growing organization. And we have, I can really recount how each of these companies have benefited by being part of the standard in terms of getting access to more customers. And, and in fact, one customer, we have worked with a, a battery manufacturer for their battery management solution, and they wanted something in two weeks. No one company could have delivered what they wanted in two weeks. It's impossible, because their requirement was crazy. But by contacting various groups here, we could put together a solution very quickly and they had it in one week, to their amazement. And that is the value of being part of the standard. So, uh, so I highly recommend, if you are in this digital economy, if you are developing EVs, you've got to be participating in a standard way of delivering. Whatever you deliver, there's a question of battery standardization, uh, the discussion I had earlier, and those things also are important. But on the connectivity side, for the software-defined vehicle, this is one of the leading organizations. I'll talk about this. I mean, I have made sure that I have convinced you SDV is complex, but it's doable. So, so this is something that we delivered for uh, an OEM, where they had multiple programs coming within a matter of six months. And on the face of it, it may seem almost impossible to be delivering that solution, but we did. And that to multiple products. And the reason for that is, again, standards. Because things are open, the APIs are clear, it has been proven on multiple operating systems, and uh, it works across devices. And most importantly, you know, and other partners know, and the OEM knows what the specification is. It's not a black box hiding behind innovation hiding behind uh, a black box, because even if it's the best solution from a proprietary uh, provider, soon enough it will fall behind, and that is the fundamental problem. And that's why standards always win. And this one has uh, rich resources which we can make available as well. So what do we do at Excel 4? We can truly help you cross the chasm to an SDV solution. We are deploying across cloud providers. You can go to their marketplace today, integrate your solutions today for data, a data pipeline. It's really that simple. And uh, this is something which uh, is being demonstrated at our booth uh, in the hall. And the way we do it is uh, only for these show participants who, who sign up, we can actually have this solution available uh, at no charge. So we want to really encourage the ecosystem to really build as fast solutions as possible. So, so I, I recommend you come there and uh, wrapping up. Uh, yes, SDV is difficult, it's challenging, not easy to implement.
but we have you covered on the connectivity portion for sure. We can help you with the rest of the designs too, but focus on connectivity, the core plumbing, so that you can truly be six months ahead if you're starting from scratch. <laughs>